God of creation took our place. The God of redemption opened the way. The day you gave your life seemed a failure in our eyes. But the stone it rolled away as you walked out. Why do you look for the living among the grave? Jesus lives, all the earth sing now. The power of death has been broken, and this changes everything. The God of perfection. Became sin. The God of salvation changed everything. The day you gave your life seemed a failure in our eyes. But the stone it rolled away as you walked out of that grave. Let this changed that means our outlook on even the hardest things in life are changed right the suffering the times we are challenged and this next song is all about a declaration of how we'll react to the hard times of life that we will still choose to praise God to seek him in the valleys I am holding on to faith cause I know you'll make a way and I don't always understand And I don't always get to see But I will believe it I will believe it You make mountains move You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls And I will speak to my feet I will preach in my doubt. You were faithful then. You'll be faithful now. I am standing on your word. Heaven down to earth, and you will. 
prayer this morning, Jesus. you would reveal yourself to us and that it would change the way we live. Good morning, church. I'm Pastor Cal, and if I don't know you, I'm the pastor here, and uh, welcome to service with us this morning. Um, Just a couple announcements this morning. If you are new, there's a guest card right in front of you in the little pocket. You fill that out, place it in one of the boxes over here. I'd be happy to get in touch with you, tell you about who we are, what we do, what we do, and maybe give you a joke or two in the process. I like jokes, and so... If you like me, please laugh at my jokes, I'm begging you. Um, Anyway, we are nominating this morning for uh, deacons. Now, who are deacons? What are deacons? They are leaders in the church, men the church believes are upstanding in moral quality and commitment as a Christian. And so, if you want to nominate someone and you're a member of this church, behind you on the small tables are, are, are these forms, and you put a name on there of a man you think is the right man for this position, And you can put it in the box over here as well to your right or to your left. This morning, Pastor Ernie is speaking about forgiveness, a word that we talk a lot about. And I'll just leave it at that. Because it is hard to forgive. It's easy to say we forgive, but it's hard to actually forgive. You may say, I forgive you, but I don't like you. Or I forgive you and I'm still working through stuff. And so if you talk that way, might I suggest you're struggling with forgiveness. But guess what? Jesus, Jesus tells us to forgive. And not just to forgive, but to radically, comprehensively forgive. And once we think we've forgiven enough, we forgive again and again and again. And so this is one of those messages where it is so easy to just hear it and go, yeah, I know, I forgive, I'm going to try to forgive, and not really do anything, might I suggest to us we open our minds, 
open our hearts and really listen and evaluate our lives and ask the question, do I need to forgive someone? Hi, everybody. We're looking at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, beginning of verse 21. And we're going to read down to the end of verse 35. So it's a lot of scripture, but it's one story. And, and in order to get the full teaching of the story, you have to read the entire thing. So here we are, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, beginning with verse 21, reading down into verse 35. It'll be on the screens for you as well. Let's begin to read. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Some manuscripts have uh, 490 times. Seven times, seventy times, ten. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Now, in the original language, it's talents. And I don't want us to lose that because it's a unit of measurement. And so it says a lot more than a, than a bag of gold. It was a unit of measurement not of money, but of weight. And so we're talking about an extraordinarily large sum of money, which I'll say more about in a moment. So anyway, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. And it was, that servant was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children, all that he had, be sold to repay the debt. And this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay everything back. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a, a hundred silver coins, about $4,000 in today's money. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. The fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could repay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. And the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancel all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. You should forgive easily and often. We do not know exactly what prompted Peter to come and ask the question of Jesus about how often should I forgive my brother. Now, it, it may have been, and I think it probably was, what our Lord taught in verse 15 and following about how to deal with sin, the sin of somebody against you. He said, when someone sins against you, you go to that brother or sister and you tell them of their sin. And maybe if you tell them of their sin, they can, they can see it, ask for forgiveness, and you will have gained your brother or sister back as a brother or sister or a friend. Now, that's not what we do. We ignore the teaching of Jesus. When somebody sins against us, we go out and we talk to everyone but the person who sinned against us. We gossip about them, run them down behind their back. We cause them all kinds of problems to their reputation, but we don't go to the person who sinned against us and try to make things right. The world and the church would be a greatly different place if we listen to the teaching of Jesus and when someone hurts us in some way, we go to that person and try to restore that relationship in some way. So Peter hears this. He thinks to himself, okay, I accept that. I'll go to my brother or sister and ask uh, them to uh, make right what they've done against me. Then I can forgive them. But what if they sin against me again? Or in general, what about all the people in the world who sin against me in some way? How often should I forgive them? Now, Peter has been, been maturing spiritually, and so he gets very liberal about how many times he wants to offer forgiveness. Now, the rabbi said between zero and four times, depending on what source they were using, and then you wouldn't forgive the person any longer. Peter has gone past that. He used the number of perfection, the number of God, and says, how about seven times? And Jesus says, no, Peter, not seven times, but seven times, 70 times. So he's, what Jesus is saying, okay, Peter, you forgive once, twice. You start counting them up, you know, and you get to 
357 times I forgave you, and 410 times I forgave you, and 462 times I forgave you. Oh, 491 times. You got luck, buddy. Am I forgiving you? No, our Lord has taken the number of perfection, seven, number of completion, ten, and whatever manuscript you use, whatever combination you use, what he's saying is that you forgive a person every time they sin against you. And notice that Peter didn't even ask, do they ask me for forgiveness? Even when people don't ask you for forgiveness, you forgive them, and you forgive them an infinite number of times, so it's easy for you. It's often for you. You offer forgiveness to people. Why do you do it? Why do you do what Jesus is teaching here? It's, it's, now, I'm, we're going to go deeper into this, okay? But simply because it's right to do. Jesus taught, forgive, whenever somebody asks for forgiveness. Have that brother or sister restored to you. Forgive whenever they ask you. It's just right to do. But I can tell you a practical thing. The book of Hebrews talks about a root of bitterness. Well, that is a poisonous kernel that grows in your heart and your spirit, your soul. When you have anger against somebody else. So it's somebody that, that you think has wronged you. I know this seems strange in a time of trigger warnings and safe spaces and microaggressions, but it's just life that people are going to hurt you. When you just live your life, people are going to insult you. People are going to sin against you. There's nothing that can stop that. I think it's maturity when you come to the place of realizing that just living life is messy. So what do you, what do, you do when this happens? You let bitterness grow inside your heart? You start hating people because of what they've done to you? And what happens is that, that bitterness, that poison takes over who you are and you become an angry, mean scarred person. Every relationship is soured. Everything you do is affected by your anger against people as you hold in your heart the wrongs that they've done to you. It's just a practical matter. If you can learn to forgive, people lose their control over you and your behavior. Are you getting this? When you learn to forgive, people can't make you into anything. You're changed from the inside by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, a person that forgets what's done and forgives what's done. And by the way, since I'm talking about this, forgiveness means forgetting. It's like the Old Testament describes the forgiveness of God towards our sin. He separates our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. He puts it in the bottom of the ocean. He cleanses us of all sin. We're as white as snow and God forgives us. I've heard people say very pompously, Christian people say very pompously, well, I... Did I sound pompous enough just then? Well, I forgive, but I don't forget. If you say I forgive and don't forget, you don't understand the meaning of the word forgiveness. It means the sin is cleansed, forgotten, washed away. So you should do it because it's right to do. Jesus taught it, and that's enough. And practically speaking, it's going to to free you up from the burden you carry of people hurting you, you're going to let it go. From heaven's throne you came to us and set your heart upon the cross. You'll never know the sacrifice you made. For all our sin and all our shame you took
Messiah. 